and welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Today's video is an experimental video. A lot of you have asked me in the past and in the present, of course, uh, you know, about a heat press. Can a heat press cure Plastisol inks? And, you know, I have been told by several people, you know, that they do this and, you know, I've, I've read a little bit about it online and I've talked to some people who've done it and they say it's possible. So, uh, I thought we would try it today just as an experiment. Now, we're going to try to make this video pretty quick because I, I'm in between print jobs, so i got to set up a job. So, um, I'm basically I'm going to use, we're going to print white ink on a black shirt. I'm going to use my heat gun to dry it to the touch. Okay, and then we'll use a heat press to um, do the final cure. <laughs> okay, um, and I, I would suggest for this that you would use a piece of Teflon sheet, but all I have today is uh, craft paper, and it's, it's a heavy, waxy type paper. So I'm going to use this, but I think a piece of Teflon, you know, the Teflon sheets that you get with heat presses would probably be a more ideal uh, piece to use on top of the Plastisol ink, okay? So let's quickly do a little print with the cat spit screen and then we'll go over to the heat press and press it and see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna do a little test print here. Make sure you have a little spray tack, of course. I got a rag shirt here. This is just a shirt that, you know, got ruined or something, so. We're going to do a test print on here, and it's probably important to note that, you know, using this method to cure your shirts will be very slow. So that's the only thing. And also, um, my off contact and all that, I didn't set any of that. This is just a test print, so um, this screen is actually bad. i got to chuck it. It's, it's still that one screen that has a tear in it. So... Um, <laughs> I just need to chuck it. I've just been really busy, you know, so I haven't made a new cat spit screen. Uh, but we'll do that. But So there's a pretty decent print. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to double hit it or anything. I'm just going to lay down a little bit, do a putty job, as we say. Okay. Flood it a little bit in there. And then a light stroke that will leave a lot of ink on there. Okay, so now I got a good amount of ink, probably too much in some areas, so I might, I might stroke it again just to take a little bit off over here. Okay, now, um, yeah, let me do that. It's pretty, it's pretty high, I mean, that left a bit of ink on there. All right, that's a little better. All right, it's not the, per it's not the most perfect print because my off contact is all goofed up, um, but it'll be sufficient to do this little test just to see uh, you know, whether or not a heat press can cure, all right, the Plastisol ink without, you know, affecting it badly. So I'm going to do a little uh, heat gun and dry it to the touch, and then we'll move over to the heat press and just press it and see what happens, okay? All right, so I just dried the, the Plastisol ink to the touch so that, you know, just so that if you, you know, touch it, no ink is coming up. And I just did that because I figured um, that it'd be best to have it dry to the touch so that when you put the, when you put the uh, Teflon sheet or the wax uh, craft paper on top, you know, nothing will pick up immediately. You know what I'm saying? It'll, it'll stay on the uh, shirt until you... Go ahead and press it. So I'm going to press it for, you know, 30 seconds at about 350 and just see what happens, you know, because this is generally speaking what I've been told or what I've read about, okay? And we'll see what happens. So let's try it out. We'll uh, time compress this 30 seconds for you, okay? All right, so it's just coming up to the end of the 30 seconds. So there it is. Going to pop it up. Shirt smoking, so that's good. And I can see that it's a disaster. It's a mess. So, you know, that you can see, look right there, that craft, the craft paper picked up some of the ink. Okay. And, you know, quite frankly, it, you know, it smushes, you know, when you have a higher, uh, you know, a higher ink deposit like you do on a black shirt with white ink on the black where you're leaving a lot of ink, 
okay? Um, it, it will tend to push, you know, push the ink more into the knit. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I, you know, I don't know. This may work, you know, this may work better for, uh, like, uh, darker inks on white shirts where you're not, you know, you don't have as much of the uh, ink. But for me, just looking at what happened based on the craft paper, picked up some of the ink, as you can see. Okay, sorry, I had to just check my camera thing there. See, make sure you can see what I'm... <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so, uh, and the print looks like, it looks like hellish compared to what it was. Okay, so, um, I, I don't know. I would say that it's possible, but more likely that you're going to get better results with, with uh, print jobs that have less ink volume so that you're not taking a volume of ink and smushing it and spreading it out. You know what I'm saying? So this may work fine for black ink on white shirts or, you know, red ink on white shirts or something like that where the volume of ink is much less. But uh, from what I could see, uh, you definitely need a Teflon sheet and it's cured. I can see it's cured. The ink is cured. It's stretching, right? But the print doesn't look good and it picked up some of the ink. So I would say definitely have a Teflon sheet, reduce the pressure, and, you know, try not to, you know, have such an ink volume and you might be able to do it, but it's going to be very slow. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting. So like, you know, on a multicolor, where say you had a white underbase and you're laying a bunch of ink on top, probably would kind of ruin the resolution or the clarity of the print, okay? So that's kind of a cool little experiment. It, it definitely cures the ink. That's cured. I mean, the ink is cured. So it definitely will cure the ink, but I think the issue is, uh, you know, what it's gonna do to the print resolution by flattening the ink and smushing it more into the T-shirt. Into the, uh, all right, so that was kind of fun. Um, honestly, I thought it would work a lot better than that because, you know, from what I've spoke to people and seen online, I thought it was really, it might be a viable option. But based on what I've seen, you definitely would have to have a Teflon sheet. The craft paper is no good because that just, it picked up some ink, which, you know, it, it peels off like rubber off of the Teflon sheet. So some of the, you know, the higher ink deposit, the more of an ink deposit that you have, the less likely it is that you'll be able to use this process uh, successfully. Okay, so, um, you know, it really kind of ruined the print for me. Um, uh, the white ink on a black shirt, it really smushed it in and, and kind of brought out uh, all the jagged edges of the knit because the ink smushed into, the, into all the little gaps of the knit and uh, some of the ink picked up and came off where it was really heavy. Remember when I printed it, I said, oh man, that side's really heavy. Let me stroke it again and take some of the ink off. And I did, but it was still a higher deposit over here. And I guess that's why, you know, some of the ink picked up over there. So um, that's what I'm saying. So like, you know, you just, this, this heat, heat press method may work for people because maybe they're doing um, a lot of uh, dark inks on light fabrics, and that works fine because there's less ink volume, and you know it doesn't. It's not smushing down a layer of ink, flattening it out. Okay, so all I could recommend is, like I said, use a Teflon sheet, reduce your pressure on the on the heat press. You might reduce the time, and uh, you know I this was just an experiment, so I might have cooked it a little. I, I don't know, you know, but for me. Um, I would not say that that's a really good option. It might be okay if you're going to screen print one or two shirts a year, or you know what I'm saying, like just personally, you're going to print some red ink on white or black ink on a light blue or something just for yourself. You might be able to cure it in the heat press and get away with it just fine. But for commercial screen printing, where we're doing uh, more complex artwork, and oftentimes we're printing on black shirts where we have a higher volume of ink, uh, the heat press, you know, I think is going to, you know, not do you justice as far as the clarity of your print. It's going to affect the resolution and the, and the look of your print, and uh, it's very likely that it'll ruin it like this. So, interesting stuff, um, but maybe not, you know, so good.
to, to use commercially. Okay? <laughs> so, I, I don't know. You know, any of you who have tried this out, maybe some of you have had experience with pressing uh, t-shirts, comment below and let us know, uh, you know, what, what you did and how you did it. Maybe you have a formula that works for you and you could share it with everybody. Okay? I'll give you a close-up look of this shirt just for the hell of it, so to speak. <laughs> Pardon my French or whatever. And, um, you know, you can see how it really kind of ruined the print. Okay? I'll give you a quick close-up. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. If you like what you see, comment below, rate thumbs up, and always subscribe, please. I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot for your time and attention, and we'll see you next time.